Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is another Witty Writers Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. Hooray! So please comment, say hello, and ask your questions during the show. I have been so excited about today's show because we are here with the fabulous Mark Gottlieb from Trident Media Group. Hello, Mark. Hey there. Good to see you again. I've been so excited about this one, Mark, because we've done many shows so far. We've covered so many things. We've covered especially querying and reaching out to agents, preparing your manuscript to make sure it's spot on. We've done all of those, um, which, by the way, are all available on my Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So please go and watch them if you if you've missed any of those, everybody. Um, but today we're actually going to cover what happens when you actually get interest from a literary agent. Um, and as you're one of the top literary agents in, in the country, who better to talk to about it? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And I think this is a, a great topic, a great idea too, because it's a question I often, you know, would get asked by conferences and workshops. They would always say to me, you know, oh, everyone wants to know what happens next. You've gotten an agent and then sort of what's the next step? What's everything that happens after that? And I would often say to the conferences and workshops, you know, because I'm, I'm too pragmatic, you know, I, I would say, well, first, I want to help them find an agent, get an agent. And they would say, yeah, we know that. But what happens? And so I, I figure I finally gave in. You convinced me. Um, we should talk about everything that that kind of happens after that point. Like, you know, you've written a book, you've found an agent now, but uh, you're, you know, you're ready to kind of cross that bridge into new territory. So, um, I think it's it's useful to share that kind of information with people. Absolutely, and I've got to say, I mean, obviously, you know me. I'm a I'm a research fiend. Um, there's not really that much information out there about what happens when you get an agent. I mean, there's hardly anything, not from a real perspective from an author, you know, so uh, this is a fantastic opportunity and I'm so grateful for you coming on. I want to start right at the beginning though, because obviously all our viewers are writers, authors that, you know, some of them are querying, some of them are thinking about it. So when you, when you receive a manuscript and you know it's a fantastic story. You just see so much potential. You know it could be absolutely great. What do you then do as an agent to start the ball rolling with that author? Yes. Yeah, so the starting point would be, let's say I've received a query letter and I and the query letter sounded good. So I requested the manuscript. The manuscript was great. You know, I loved the story. I thought it could work well in the marketplace. I see a lot of promise in the work. So I would reach out to the author then and, you know, have a conversation. I it used to always be by phone unless someone was close enough to the city to meet in person. Now with everything, it, it's Zoom, which is great because, you know, I, I like it because we can, you schedule it, it goes right into your calendar. And then uh, because there, there's a video call aspect to it, it's kind of one step closer to meeting in person. It's a little bit better than the phone. You know, it's a little bit more personal. And uh, what I do is uh, I'm able to uh, like do a screen share and basically walk the potential client through, uh, you know, what our website is like. I usually take them, for instance, through our homepage, our About Us page, to uh, share with them, you know, the awards that our agency, our clients have won. Uh, I tell them like just a little bit of the history of the company and my, about myself and the clients uh, I represent. And then, uh, and I, I uh, tell them just like, I try and tell them a little something, some of my interests, some of the personal things about myself. Like I am, um, I think you know this Beth, but I uh, volunteer with a literacy program um, called, it's part of family centers. They're a nonprofit and they, uh, specialize in like health and human services. So they, uh, what I do with them is um, on a volunteer basis, I tutor English to um, like low income immigrant families who otherwise wouldn't really have access to that kind of thing. Um, 
but anyway, so I tell them about the agency and myself um, and some of our services. So I walk them, for instance, through the work we do in the book to film and TV space. I tell them uh, about the work we do in foreign rights for books and translation, things like audiobooks. And I show them how we market and promote our clients to publishers, how we work with publishers, how we make for a good publishing experience for authors. Um, and everything else, you know, an author needs in their life. We go yes. through like the accounting, the contract review type stuff. And then from there, um, hopefully they sign with the agency. If they do, you know, there's more after that. Um, I was going to say, I see a lot of people are, are writing in the comments saying hello. They are, see. they are. Let's pop them up and, uh, and, and give them a little shout out. Um, we've got my daughter. Polly, she says, woo, the dynamic duo is back. Yes, we are. Bless her. I love her. And my, my first grandbaby is due in October. I just wanted to throw that in there. So I'm super oh, excited. Congratulations. So excited. So excited. We've also got Vikram. He says, Mark, thanks for spending time with us. Oh, he's so sweet. He's always there straight away. Bless him. He's awesome. We've also got Evelyn. She says, hello. Hello to you, my darling. Um, and we've also got J.R. Byers. Hello, darling. She says, but how do you get your manuscript seen? Uh, now, I'm going to get in there because we've done previous shows with regards to writing the best query letter um, and, and, you know, in selling your story. So, J.R., you can go back to our YouTube channel or my previous Facebook videos. And Mark and I have discussed that. Um, but you're welcome to send me a message if you want to... to talk about any particular points we've also got Darlene she says hello welcome welcome Darlene and we've also got the fabulous Josephine she says I'm here hello to you both um we've got lots of people watching if you have got a question for Mark or myself please put them in the comments there is no silly questions because if you're thinking it somebody else is too so if you want to know anything please pop them in the questions and we will try and get through to them as much as possible now, Mark, getting back to you reaching out to, to an author and giving them all that information, that is super important, isn't, isn't that? Because there are so many um, agencies out there, especially the smaller ones, who can promise the earth but not deliver. Whereas mm -hmm. companies like Trident Media Group, who you work for, um, has got a proven track record. You know, you, you've done June which is an amazing book that's that with numerous editions, with with massive film rights, with movie rights and everything else. So companies like Trident Media and yourself have got a proven track record of what they've achieved and, yeah. and what you've done around the world. Um, but obviously, less well-known agents and agencies haven't mm. got as much clout haven't got as much um experience so i think as an author mm -hmm. we need to take that into consideration as well don't we yeah and before i say that no, speak to that thank you for tooting my horn i'll i'm going to uh your horn for the witty writer show too with something that uh vikram said in saying mara thanks for spending this time with us beth Thank you for spending time with us and putting the show together. It's not something that you have to do necessarily, but you do it and it helps a lot of people. And I'm sure it means a lot to everyone. So thank you. Oh, yeah. you did a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, Mark. I'm a great believer in trying to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I've been very blessed with, with friends, family and my, my hard work paying off. And I think it's always nice to help others. And like you, it's so rewarding, especially when you know there are so many authors out there who are brand new, don't really know what they're doing, don't know which direction to go in. So it makes a massive difference, doesn't it? But I might change our name from the Witty Writer Show to the Dynamic Duo, like Holly suggested. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like what you said about, it's kind of like that Leonard Nimoy quote. What does he say? Uh, the miracle is this, the more we share, the more we have. So yes. yeah, I'm, I'm uh, 
proponent of that. But yeah, yeah. to speak to what, what you said, you know, the thing that happened was, I would say a long time ago before the internet, there weren't as many literary agencies. And then with the proliferation of the internet, it was a double-edged sword. On the one hand, um, lots of information is there at your fingertips, but at the same time, because of the internet, anyone can put up a shingle now and say, hey, I'm a literary agent or I, I have a literary agency. And, you know, there's a lot of noise out there in terms of what an agent is, what an agent should do, this or that. And I think the best thing you can do is kind of like you were saying, Beth, just look yes. at the work the agency has done. Yes. The data, the work, the raw data it will always speak for itself. So um, I think that's the best thing writers can do. I mean, you can look at deals, for instance, on you know, Publishers Lunch or whatever, and they, um, you know, you can get a real sense of the actual work they're doing. But um, so, you know, assuming, let's say now, uh, just going back to what we were also originally talking about, let's say assuming an author and agent are working together, you know, the author says, yeah, I would, I would love to work with you. Uh, from there, the agent will put forth usually either an agency agreement or what we've been doing in more recent years, just given the pandemic, the challenges of the pandemic, um, what happened was um, it was hard to get stuff out to the mail to yeah. people. You remember in 2020 and uh, people didn't want to be uh, receiving mail, let alone opening it or any of that. So yeah. I said to our head of business affairs, I said, how do I get an agency agreement, you know, a contract over to someone to get them signed up to the agency when they don't want to be opening their mail? Yeah. And, um, you know, we hadn't really started doing things by way of DocuSign, electronic signature, any of that. Um, and she, I said, what's a quick and easy way I can get clients signed up to the agency? And, and she said, well, we can replicate the agency agreement by way of email. And it'll be like a short form agreement by way of email, like a deal memo or something. And if it's okay, the client can write back and say, yeah, sounds good. And then from there, you know, assuming you have that or assuming you have a fully signed agency agreement, you know, between the agency and the author, um, you know, you'd set to work on if it were nonfiction, you know, polishing the nonfiction book proposal and sample chapters, if it were fiction, you know, going through the manuscript if it needs any edits, preparing it for submission, and assuming everything is ready to go, then what we would do is I would craft a pitch and a list of editors along a submission to show the client. And then if the client uh, is fine with, you know, the list of editors, we go out on submission. I field offers from publishers, negotiate to the best of terms. And in the best case scenario, you know, present the author with, you know, an offer from a publisher or multiple offers as the case may be. Uh, and then it's up to the author to decide, you know, who uh, they want to work with in terms of a publisher. Um, going back to what you said in terms of the, the cloud of the agency and all of that, you know, given that we, our agency leads the publishing industry in both number of deals and amount of money for deals, you know, Obviously, our business goes to the bottom line of most every book publishing company. So our submissions get read much quicker. You know, they probably go to the top of the stack to be read. Uh, editors are a lot more uh, responsive at, as a result. We probably get better deals for clients or better contracts than most other agencies can just because of, you know, we have very strong boilerplate, you know, form agreements basically with publishers, which have been like pre-negotiated over years and years, like decades with publishers. Um, so anyway, assuming the publishing agreement is good, the author's happy with the deal, the author signs off, the publisher signs off, then the publisher pays a book advance, like a large lump sum of money for the chance to publish the book. Typically they've paid that in past years, like half on signing of the contract, and then half when the author delivers the manuscript. But in more recent years, with the way things are, publishers want to spread the payments out to you know thirds or fourths, things like that. Um, and then all monies uh, flow through the agency, 
commissioned by us at 15%, and we pay on the remaining 85% of monies to the client, and we send them, along with all of that, a fully signed copy of their agreement with the publisher, an accounting of all this, you know, royalty statements as they were to come in, all of that. And our commission structure, you know, like any other agency, it's the same across the board in the industry. You'll see that anywhere you look. Yeah, I was going to oh. ask about that because I, I, I didn't know whether different agencies had different um, commission rates and everything else. So you think it's fairly standard? I think it's questionable if an agency is charging more than that. And I think it's questionable if they're charging less than that. They're charging less because they want to see if they can undercut everyone's business because they're probably not a big player in the agency world. And they're charging more. And if they're charging more, that goes against industry practices and norms. And, you know, we don't do that. We actually, we list our commission structure on our website for the whole world to see because we're very transparent about that. There's no smoke and mirrors there. Which is fantastic because obviously, I mean, you, your website for Trident Media Group has fantastic information, fantastic information, not just about, you know, agents like yourself, but also the company as well. And as you said, you, you are very transparent. So, so anybody who is looking at querying an agent, if you go to the Trident Media Group website, you will see all that information that Mark's just mentioned. So you can compare um, and, and know what sort of thing you're looking at. Um, information is, knowledge is power, as they say, knowledge is power. Um, we've got a load more comments, so I'm going to pop them up and let's have a look. Um, so we've got James. Hi, James. He says, phew, just got here. Good thing this isn't a Zoom. <laughs> very true, very true. Um, Steve says, apparently I have a bad connection and cannot hear the show. Oh, no. Will this be added to YouTube afterwards? Um, we're actually live on YouTube as well, Steve. So, yes, it will be. It's already up there and it will remain up there. So you can go back and watch it anytime. Um, and also you can watch it on my page, on my author page as well, anytime you like. And please feel free to share. Um, and on that note, please don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe here and on YouTube as well, because then you will get notified when we've got more upcoming shows and you won't miss anything. We've also got Bonetta. Hello, Bonetta. She says, hello and great afternoon, Mark Gottlieb and Queen Beth. I love her. <laughs> I love her. She's the only one that calls me queen and I love it. <laughs> I might have to get Tiara. Um, we've also got the fabulous author, Kerry Weston. Hello, Kerry. She says, I can't seem to get agents interested in my six to eight picture books. Any idea what I might be doing wrong? Um, I would refer back to our previous shows on, uh, on our Facebook and YouTube channel because um, we do give some valuable information with regards to that. Um, but obviously your pitch and your hook just aren't catching their attention. Um, or it could be that you're not actually doing the illustrations yourself as well, in which case, as Mark's discussed in previous shows, pairing an author with an illustrator can be a bit tricky. Um, mm. so, so do refer back to our previous shows because we do talk a little bit about that. Uh, we've also got the wonderful Jane. Hi, Jane Lockwood. Um, Jane's actually just read my, she was one of my test readers. Uh -huh. a massive mm. up, so I'm very pleased. Uh, she says, I'm here. How long does an agent give the author if they cannot get publishers interested in the book? Six months or less, question mark? I have no idea. What a great question. Um, that is a tricky thing because, I mean, on average, I tend to like to give submissions at least three to four months. Um, there are some instances, though, where nine months went by, it seemed like all hope was lost, and then a publisher came out of the woodwork with an offer. And then there are other instances where we, uh, you know, tweaked a proposal a few times or we, um, you know, expanded a submission or we have tried with different projects and then we were able to get a publisher. So, you know, the road is not straight and narrow. It's always very twisty. There's, you know, bumps in the road, things like that. I suppose, and we've, and we've mentioned this in previous shows as well, 
the book industry is so fluid and it's constantly moving and changing all of the time. And, you know, agents like yourself and publishers, you know, you've got the inside track. So, you know, what has just been picked up, what is just about to launch. So, so that can affect whether another manuscript gets picked up as well, can't it? Because, you oh. know, if, if a, if a book's just been picked up and they and they've got a really good feeling that it's going to go big, oh my they, gosh, might, yes. they might not want to pick up another one that's similar because they've got to focus on the original one that they've just done. I run into that many times. Uh, the most blatant instance was uh, there was a book about the life of Agatha Christie and what happened to her during the days where she she had gone, I don't know how many people know this about Agatha Christie, but she had gone missing. Uh, and then no one knew where she was. And this was in the days before the internet and all that. And then she appeared again and people asked her where she had been. And her answer was always, uh, you know, I have no idea where I was. And like such a thing for a mystery writer to say. And it's always fascinated people and lots of people ha have different suspicions about it. Uh, they thought her life had been you know, threatened by uh, like a former spouse or something like that. Um, but anyway, this book was a fictionalized account of all that kind of to explain what really went on. I was amazed we couldn't sell it to publishers. And later on, I found out, you know, say Martin's and like a really big deal bought a very similar book. There we so, go. So you, you just never know. And sometimes it's just worth, you know, putting it on the back burner, waiting and not, you know, a certain amount of time. And then, as you, you know, as you said, for pitching it again when the time is right. So it's, it's a fluid thing. It, the book business is, is, uh, is a strange animal. Um, mm. We've also got a, a comment from Vikram. He says, I can only imagine what it feels like to get the call from, from a Trident mm. literary agent. Mm -hmm. what, what's the funniest reaction you've seen? Oh, someone uh, started crying. They had to hang up and call back. They just got a little too emotional. And, um, you know, uh, someone uh, had to run and get a margarita. You know, they wanted to celebrate. <laughs> uh, what else have I uh, run into? Um, someone was like, you're kidding me, right? Like, they just didn't believe it for whatever reason. Uh, and then, you know. Stuff like that sometimes, yeah. I'm a happy dancer. I do the happy dance when I get good news. I can't help myself. I just have to let it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, excuse me. I need to mute the phone one second. And, you know, they're, like, running up the walls and over the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that. It's fantastic. Um, Holly says, wow, I love that. And she says, geez, Vanetta, you're going to make her head big, LOL, her loving daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I can't mm. help it. I love the fact she calls me queen. Um, um, Carrie says, ha ha. Um, let's have a look. And she says, thanks, hon. Oh, bless it. Look, she's going to make my head big. Look, Beth is truly incredible. Oh, I'm giving you a virtual hug, Bonetta. Virtual hug. Um, we've also got another comment from Jane. She said, thank you so much. I know it's hard to get things right. I make mistakes all the time. Thank you for answering me. I really appreciate it. Don't we all, Jane? Don't we all? It's all trial and er error, my love. Um, okay, let's have a look. James says, if I ever get famous, I'm I'm taking Mark with me. That's a compliment and a half. Um, and he says, oh, hang on. Oh, that's a repeat. Thank you, pardon. Let's have a look. And James says, LOL, Beth wears thou, I'd squeal, not something anyone mm. wants to hear. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Mm. Now I know you've got a fantastic relationship with the publishers that you work with. Um, just to give our authors a bit more information, how closely do you work with the publishers when you've, when you've, you know, you've signed an author, you love their work. Um, is it, a, you know, do they keep you updated once they've accepted or once they've said, yes, we definitely want this book. Is there a yeah. constant regular relationship going on? What's the process there, Mark? That's a good question because, yes, there's more after the deal-making process. You know, once we were to find a book publisher, um, 
you know, and the contract were to be signed, the publisher begins, you know, all their, their processes, you know, a delivery date is set for the manuscript, something that feels comfortable for both the author and, and the publisher. Um, they set, you know, a publication date, usually a season, if not a specific date yet. Um, you know, one of the things we ask for publishers through the publishing process is like, like a production calendar. It looks like a calendar or, right. you know, it could be a list of dates. And basically, so the author knows what materials will be available when, so they're not wondering when can I see my book cover, you know, when will copy edits or proofreading be done, things like that. And then um, that I think helps the author align with the publisher much better. And at a certain point, we'll also ask the publisher to put forth their marketing and publicity plans so that we may, you know, comment and improve upon those plans with the publisher. Uh, some of the other things the author might see in the publishing process, you know, other than seeing the main, the manuscript may be edited again, edited again, you know, both by the line or substantively, other than later processes like copy editing and proofreading before it goes off to the printer. You know, and they're seeing the book cover design, the jacket copy, all of that. Um, you know, they might have a selection of audiobook narrators to choose from uh, for who's going to be able to record their audiobook. Uh, they may, if they're really lucky, even be able to record their own audiobook, which is very rare. Uh, it's only, I think, in instances where maybe the author already has a great voice or great speaking talents like they, they have maybe they've been a ted talk or they're like an accomplished speaker or personality certainly if they're an actor they probably have the aptitude um so we work on that with publishers too um you know we we try and collect blurbs or endorsements for the book from not just trade outlets and getting the book reviewed and getting interviews set up like publicity for the author but also, um, you know, quotes from big names. So, other other, other well-known authors who will give you credibility. Exactly. Yeah. And the bigger the name, the better. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're writing a horror story and you get a thumbs up from Stephen King, you're golden. <laughs> yeah. Or nonfiction, probably good to have Malcolm Gladwell, someone like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, how much, say, obviously, you know, I'm asking questions that a lot of authors are going to be thinking as we're discussing all of this. So how much feedback and, inf you know, and, and decision making does the author have? I mean, obviously, I'm looking at it from both sides. So a publishing house and yourself have way more experience and knowledge about what works, what doesn't, what are the latest book covers, you know, what are the trendiest title names and all that type of thing. So you're aware of all of that. Mm. Do you give, you know, do you give suggestions to the author, say, you know, we're thinking of this sort of book cover, what do you think? Or is it more in the control of the publishing company? Uh, so... What we are able to do, and I mean, this goes back to just the clout that our agency has. Um, as a part of our contracts with publishers, it's already in many cases pre-negotiated, but um, we're able to get for authors like what's called consultation or or approval. Ideally, approval. It's better to be, have approval than just to be asked or consulted with. Um, and basically, the, we can sometimes get that over things like the book cover, the jacket copy description, who the audiobook narrator is to be, you know, things like that. Or better yet, if the, let's say the publisher is ha, happens to get the foreign rights, you know, we don't always like for that, but let's say they have the foreign rights, then we like for the publisher to present the author with the offer and ask them for their approval. Um, so in instances where there's consultation or approval over these things, basically, for instance, if it were a book cover, a publisher might present a few different cover book cover designs and say, here are three different, you know, design pathways we're thinking. Uh, can you give us your thoughts or tell us yes or no to this cover, that cover, that sort of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, before we go back to the comments, I just want to quickly share a bit of information with, with our authors who are watching. Um, it's so important. It's so important. If you want a book to succeed, if you can get an agent and a publisher, your life will be so much easier. And I say that because your company, Trident Media, and the publishers you work with have spent millions in research and not just about books and stories, but about things that most authors don't think about. And that is the psychology of people. Mm. Because, you know, some colors can turn people right off a book. Some mm. colors will literally draw you in. You know, mm. men are attracted to certain colors. Women are attracted to certain colors. And you know the market and what is popular for that market. As authors, most of us haven't got that knowledge or understanding. So what you do is so, so important. And I wanted to get that across because there will be authors who are watching right now who will get an agent, will get a publisher, and they need to understand that when they do work with that agent and publisher, they're gaining that feedback from mm. them and mm. suggestions because they've done all the research. They know what sells and mm. what doesn't. So I just wanted to get that across because it's super important that, you know, when you get advice like that from people like yourself and the publishers, you're getting it for a very good reason. Oh, there's a lot of, yeah, market research that goes into it for sure. I mean, they hire some of these big publishers, they hire like these data people who just sift through all that. And it's almost like they can read the matrix and know. Exactly. Um, so exactly. yeah, a lot of thought does go into much of this stuff yeah. yeah and we had a quick conversation before we went live because uh, i've recently finished my new novel and i had what i thought was the perfect title for it um and my the test readers who have read it in full loved the title however when i did some market research within book groups mm. people didn't like it and, and they said if, it, if they saw that title, they wouldn't pick it up. And I thought, okay, I need to rethink this. <laughs> uh -huh. So market research is so powerful, isn't it? it it's amazing. Um, right, okay, we've got so many more comments, which is absolutely fantastic. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so we've got Sabrina here. Hi, Sabrina. She says, just tuning in, how about a literary agent for the title Dung Bag Road? Mm -hmm. How do I get that over the pile? Mm. That's very unusual, very unusual name. Um, we have done previous videos all about having the right hook, having mm. the right query letter, um, and, and trying to give you the best mm. information of how to get on the top of that pile. So if you want to tune in to our other videos on mm. our YouTube channel, you'll feel free, darling. They're all, they are all there. They're all there. Um, she also says, production cal date calendar sounds great. I have to say, I love that. Mm. I really do, Mark, because I think there's nothing worse than no not knowing what's going on. But if oh, you've got right. a schedule and it's literally listing everything that's happening with your project, that's brilliant. Oh, I mean, for instance, we had clients who they were making their debuts as authors with publishers. They had no idea what to expect. And we said to the publisher, can you send us your production calendar? You know? And they were fine with that. And then the author, if they so wanted, they could plug in those actual dates in their own calendar and know. And that way they don't have to be bugging the publisher. They don't have to be wondering. And it helps authors plan, like, for instance, when can I debut my book cover? You know, when yes. can I be sending out my manuscript to be collecting endorsements and reviews and interviews and things like that? Yeah, massive. I think that's fantastic. I really do. Um, we've got a comment from Michael Mara. Hello. He says, hello, I have a trilogy based on my life undercover in New York City in the late 60s to mid 70s. Interesting, interesting, interesting. If you need to write a hook and a query letter and sell your story, if you go to our YouTube channel and you will see the videos all about it, give you some inspiration, Michael. It really, really will. Um, Oh, we got Leslie Rush, another fantastic author. She says, hi, Beth. Hi, Mark. 
Welcome, Leslie. Welcome, welcome. Um, Mark says, oh, Michael says, my fear is that it contains graphic violence and racial slurs. I can't erase the, the reality of what it was. I have to say, though, there is a definite market, isn't there, Mark, for realistic fiction? I mean, when you look at, you know, things like pulp fiction and, and, and um, oh, what's the other one that I'm trying to think of? It's just gone straight out of my head. Oh, my gosh. No, it's gone. I can't think. Um, but there is a market out there for graphic novels that are, you know, the crime, thrillers, et cetera, et cetera, that have those graphic details. I think you've just got to find the the right agent who has worked with books and authors like that um, and and do your market research. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. I mean, there is a book, I think, uh, called Cherry. I'm forgetting the author's name, Nick something or other. And, you know, deals with heroin use, things like that. But it was a big bestseller. I think it got picked up for a movie deal as well. Um, Clockwork Orange. That's graphic. I mean, you've got needles next to a baby in a crib and all sorts. And, and that was massively successful. As you said, that was another book turned to a movie. So there is a huge market out there. But you do have to find the right agent for your work who who is, you know, into that type of novel and that has sold that type of novel to it to a publisher the two best things that i found is mark um publishers marketplace which you and i both use it's fantastic as you said mark it shows agents deals publishing deals it shows all that information and also query tracker i love as well because with query query tracker when i'm querying i can actually filter my my the agents to in the us or in the uk i can filter their genres that they represent um and query tracker will give you basic information about that agent and it will also give you their publisher marketplace link so you can go straight to there to see what they've done recently so market research peeps market research okay let's have a look another comment Okay, we've got Precious. Hello, Precious. She says, thank you. How does someone become a literary agent? Good question. You know, that's a funny thing. It's sort of they call, publishing in general, they call it sort of this accidental profession. You know, people kind of had historically just sort of stumbled out of the humanities into book publishing. You know, maybe they couldn't make a sense of working as a, you know, English teacher or something like that. So it's sort of, it's always been that way, but in more recent years, there are degrees and, and things like that, uh, that people are getting at universities in order to, um, you know, begin working in publishing. So for instance, I think NYU now, for instance, has an MS in, in publishing. There are some degra graduate degrees in publishing now, which kind of baffles me because <laughs> Everyone like in gen in my generation and generations ahead of me, no one went and like got a degree to work in book publishing. I I mean I had gone and done that, you know, in uh, getting a degree from Emerson College, you know, in writing literature and publishing. But um, otherwise, it's just a bunch of English majors trying to make sense of how to run a business. <laughs> I suppose if somebody wants to go down that route and become a literary agent, I suppose the best thing that they can do is try and get an internship at a publishing company or at a literary agency, you know, and actually get in there and get the experience. I mean, you and your father are, are so inspirational, especially your dad. I mean, he started, you know, in the book industry when there was no internet, no eBooks, nothing like that. But he started in the mailroom, didn't he? And, and he literally worked his way up. And I think that's fantastic. Not only does it make him and yourself fantastic literary agents because you've worked in, in different departs, departments and worked your way up, but you've learned so many aspects of the business industry. And that knowledge then gets passed on to help authors like ourselves. So I think that's fantastic. 
But most, I think most literary agencies do have a page um, on their websites saying whether there are positions available, don't they? Yeah, so, there, are, there are definitely job postings, you know, on different job posting sites and things like that. A lot of yeah. people just start in an assistant job somewhere and kind of work their way up from there. Absolutely, absolutely. So have a look, Precious, and let us know what happens. We would love to know what happens. And best of luck to you, darling. I really, really hope you uh, you get to do what you love. Um, Vikram says, will an agent have expectations of a client? More specifically, will they want an author to market themselves on social media? Good question. I think definitely. I mean, mo there was a time where you could sort of just write the book and be done with it. You know, it was like, I have a picture like Charles Dickens sitting on a boat, right, writing a novel, and then someone sailing up to the boat in a little dinghy and him, you know, passing manuscript pages off to him. And then, you know, Charles Dickens was done for the day. That was it. But it's not like that anymore. Publishers are so inundated. They're publishing many, many things. They're very big companies. The attention that publishers can really give books only go to a very select few. And so regardless, I think whether you're an author in that pond or another pond, you know, you've got to um, do everything you can to better the chances of the success of your publication. And no, I think, you know, Beth knows this too, as like a, someone with a background in marketing, um, there's no such thing as just a, a drop in the bucket, you know? Um, you could always be surprised where something just catches on. Um, yeah. So it's a great way to hedge your bets too, just to be, you know, promoting your book wherever you can, however you can. Well, and not only that, I mean, the, there's there's such a massive, massive book world for readers. I mean, you and I have seen it on Instagram and TikTok and on YouTube. You know, you've got book talk, romance book talk, spicy book talk. There's a massive book world out there that authors can connect with. And, you know, it, 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 I think so many readers love to connect with their favorite author, don't they? Even if it's just clicking like on their video or, you know, like on their latest um, book reveal or whatever, you can't beat that relationship and readers can't have that relationship with a publisher. They just, it's just not the same. So I, I agree with you. I think the more that, you know, the more proactive authors can be, the better. Because, you know, word mouth spreads. If you reach out to one of your, one of your readers, you know, who happens to have posted about your fabulous book and you reach out and say, thank you so much for that. That's made my day. Not only is it going to make that reader's day, they're going to be absolutely over the moon, but they're going to tell everyone. They're going to tell their friends, their family. Guess what? My favorite author messaged me. That's and you can't beat advertisement and marketing like that. And it's free. It's it's completely free. So go out there and do it. Go out there and do it. Um, Sabrina says, uh, thank you. You're welcome, darling. Um, another comment from Leslie. She says, I had a production calendar and it was reassuring, even though the dates were flexible, it helps. There we mm. go. Straight from an, an author who's used one. I love it. Um, Sabrina says, right, I got anxiety checking in. Thank you. Oh, bless mm. you. We feel you. We feel you. And, and she says, m m I don't know what that is. Manga. Have no clue. Have no clue. Mm -hmm. um, okay. James says, oh, there we go. What is the worst mistake an author can make when approaching an agent for representation, asking for a friend? She cracks me up. <laughs> I think we talk about this too a little bit in another show. Just in, And my answer is usually just to try and only focus on the things that you can do right and do those things. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because and you want, yeah, it'll just get people worrying if they worry yeah. about everything they could do wrong. Just focus on the, the few things you should do correctly. Exactly. Yeah. And also get feedback, get feedback from friends, family, people who have read your other stuff. Um, as I said, I recently did that marketing research on my, my new novel and I, I was completely blown. So I had to change the title and everything, but you know, 
that I'd rather do that than just be adamant I'm going to stick with one thing and it not work. So market research is absolutely brilliant. And there are so many fantastic book groups within Facebook, especially that you can say, you know, hi, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you all think? Get feedback. It's 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 brilliant. Um, Leslie says, what genre trope seems to be worn out right now? Uh, you know, I actually wrote an article about this recently um, for it's this uh, popular blog called the, the John Fox. I think he's an editor. And um, the article is called What's Hot in Fiction Genres? I, 2022. I saw that one. Yeah, I saw um, it. I think, I think, I don't know if it lets me do a screen share or not, but um, I could I probably. Think I, actually, I think I actually shared your post on yep. my Facebook author page and the Write Better Author Smarter group that myself and Autumn run. Um, so if you go to Write Better Author Smarter and click the magnifying glass and search for Beth Wersdell Author, it will show you my posts directly. And I'm pretty sure I actually shared Mark's article about that. Ha also saying that, Mark, you are very, very big on social media. So everybody, you can follow Mark on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, you name it. Uh, Mark is on all the major platforms. And you can also go to the Trident Media website as well. Um, Twitter's a big one because obviously you, you tend, you like me, you tend to share everything on Twitter. So you can look for all the relevant, relevant links. Um, and also Mark is doing some fantastic workshops. So if you want help in a particular area, um, Mark has either done a workshop for it or is just about to. So have a look because they are fantastic and worth their weight in gold. Um, it always helps to get professional information. Okay, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Oh, CJ Ives has, uh, has arrived. Hello, darling. Uh, she says, yay, I made it on a previous message. She says, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. Sorry, mm. guys. I'll make sure I play back later this evening. See, this is why we love doing it on Facebook and YouTube, because it allows you to. And don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. Um, Jane says, Beth, you are so right about thanking people for mentioning your book. It means mm. a lot. And it's surprising how many people don't do it. I agree with that, but it goes mm. such a long way. Um, and a one, one little tip that I will give our authors, and it's something that I do regularly, when I get a, a, a fantastic review of somebody, I will check to see whether they follow me on one of the social media platforms. And if they do, I will share their review and I will tag them and personally thank them. Not only because I truly appreciate they've taken the time and effort to do that, but from a marketing point of view, when you tag them and publicly say thank you in your post, all their friends and family then see it on their social media page. So as I said, you can't beat promotion like that and it's free. So, you know, you just got to do it. Sometimes you've got to toot your own horn. Okay. And Leslie says, if an author turns down an offer from a small publishing company, would it be appropriate to include a future agent query that, um, that an offer has been made on the work? Oh, that's tricky. Um, Good question. Because on the one hand, it could indicate to the agent that there's interest and that other publishers would be interested. But on the other hand, it could also indicate that the book had already gone out on submission. And so, for instance, I would be wondering where has this book submitted, been submitted? Has it been submitted widely? Yeah, Are there still opportunities? Yeah. So I would say try to get the work sold on its merits alone and and the background of who the author is and just the quality of the work itself and have a conversation later about yeah. you know what may have gone on yeah definitely definitely as you said it, i mean it depends whether it's been put forward in front of publishers really doesn't it because it's going to be a bit weird if two different agents, two different agents, are, are, are trying to, you know, sell the same book to the publishers at the same time. 
or, mm. or too close together. Interesting, mm. interesting, interesting. Um, Leslie says, uh, thank you, Beth, for the blog post connection. You are so welcome. As I said, if you definitely don't want to miss anything um, with regards to Mark's blog, go to Mark's social media. It's all there. And you can obviously scroll back to see other things that you might have missed. Uh, CJ says, I love workshops. I will have to check those out. Please do. Please do. They are absolutely brilliant and highly recommended. Not just from me. Um, Vikram says, um, I highly recommend Mark's writing workshops. Thank there you. we go. There we go. See, personal recommendation goes a long way. And uh, Leslie says, um, right of the first refusal is the context. Okay. Uh, okay, so basically what it sounds like she's saying is there was a publisher who published her first book, has the right of ref first refusal on her next book. Right. Um, so I would say the first thing is I'll give some background on the prior publishing history. And um, you could, I suppose, let agents know that you're outside of your option obligations, you know, any kind of obligations you have to your publisher. Mm. Um, they'll probably ask you that inevitably, but you'll have to probably put your publishing history in your author bio, you know, the title yeah. and then in parentheses who published the book and what year. Yeah. I mean, it's always worth including that you've been previously published if you're going to look elsewhere, um, because that does give you credibility, doesn't it? If, if, if an author's already been previously traditionally published, that gives you an indication in their query letter that they have, you know, they, they've they come a certain, a certain way. You know, they've got that credential that they have been traditionally published. It gives credibility and a little bit of history as well. Mm. For sure, for sure. Okay, let's have a look. So Jane's got one last question. We are coming to the end, peeps. We are coming to the end. Um, Jane says, sorry, one last question. If a book has been self-published, say for a couple of years, but not pitched to any other agents or publishers, can the author then pitch it to an agent even though it has been published on Amazon for somewhere else? Sorry if that's a silly question. Um, it's not a silly question, but we have touched on this before, haven't we, Mark? Yeah. It's in other shows, but the short answer is if you self-publish, you need very good sales to justify going into traditional publishing. And very yeah. good sales probably constitute something in the tens of thousands of copies sold. Yeah. So it needs to have gone viral, really. I made a bit of a splash because then the, the, the publishers know that it's worth picking up. But thank you, darling. As I said, I'm sure other people have been thinking that exactly the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Opinion, Sabrina says if any, about audience reach and quality when self-publishing versus a publisher? I think that's a no-brainer. Uh, I mean, going with a traditional publisher is really the big time. And, you know, in self-publishing, you have to hope you hit the jackpot. Yeah. It, it, um, it's, yeah. And you, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier as well, about when you get a publisher, a publisher and an agent will help you Get your book in front of key prominent people who can read it and give you a thumbs up. And that is massive. That's a lot different. There's a big difference between getting a recommendation from a book blogger, which is still fantastic, or getting a recommendation from a top well-known author or a top well-known magazine or a top well-known celebrity who runs a book club. That is a, it. That's miles apart, isn't it? So I think I think that's mm. the biggest thing. I think that's the biggest thing. Mm. Okay. Well, Leslie says thank you very much, Mark. And uh, Jane says, oh, there we go. Jane says I was traditionally published from two thousand to two thousand and five. Does that count? Uh, Only publishers. Yeah, they're always going to look at the last book or two, and they'll look at the sales numbers and they'll make an evaluation. So. You have to think about how to position things, the publishers, and how to present yourself. But we talk about this in a, another show. So we do, we do. It's all about what to put in your query letter. Mark, I'm so sorry, but we are literally running out of time. We are due to finish. 
thank you so much for, for you. spending time with us today. As always, you're so honest and candid about the book industry and the book world and and you know, you're bridging the gap between agents and, and authors and making it so much more achievable and realistic, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely amazing. Now, you have got another workshop coming up, so mm -hmm. I would recommend to everyone to go and check out Mark's social media. Follow him on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere, because then you will get to see the posts about Mark's upcoming workshops um, and his wealth of information. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Please like, follow, subscribe here and on YouTube so you get notified of our next upcoming shows. And, uh, and we wish you all a fantastic rest of the week and a great weekend. Don't we, Mark? Yes. Be well, everyone. Take good care.